Welcome back to 365 Unlimited. We've been gone a couple weeks once again. Uh, just grinding with school, grinding with football, grinding with baseball. Uh, it's busy times, especially right around the holiday season. Uh, but we wanted to hop back on here. Uh, we, we promised that we would do this again. Uh, starting off with an NFL storyline type of episode. Things, are going, things are, that are going on across the league. Um, we want to touch on those again. It's been a couple weeks. Uh, we're pretty much at that mid-season point uh, where, where things are starting to unfold and you get a good grasp for uh, who's going to make the playoff push. Uh, you can get your early Super Bowl favorites damn near at this point. Uh, before we dive into any of that stuff, I just want to say continue to like, subscribe, <clears throat> tune into our videos. We appreciate all that support. Uh, check out our two sponsors, Driftless Quality Wear and Bakker Auto Group. Uh, they have supported us, so support them. Um, I guess we haven't had the opportunity to kind of touch on this. So, Gana, before we dive into the NFL storylines, uh, let's kind of talk about our second trip to Texas. So I'll let you. Yeah. Take it. No, it was something, you know, that we kind of came about when we were down in Texas the first time in September, just talking some stuff over with our manager, Luke, and all that. And, you know, just opportunity came about. We were able to go down to Texas for a couple of days, fly in, be a week ago Friday. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, two, it's been like yeah. almost two weeks now. I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, it's going to be two month. weeks. It's going to be two weeks coming up on Friday. You know, the days are just a wash anymore, to be honest. But no, mm -hmm. it was awesome. It was a different type of vibe than the first time, which was kind of, you know, our first interactions with everybody. And to go to a football game, you know, you kind of understood a little bit of it. But this this completely like, I don't know, I wouldn't say felt out of my element, but just being there at the party and the um, party and environment, the restaurant it was at Nick and Sam's. Shout out to them, a steakhouse downtown Dallas for Dez's birthday party. I mean, it, it was pretty much unreal. It was a private party, you know, it was an invite only. It was be able to eat, meet a lot more of the PC and the NFT world people, which was cool to put some names to faces, which we couldn't do before. It was just kind of all over social media. So that connect was awesome. You know, it was, it was a, and then also, you know, just side note, we met Trayvon Diggs and just chopped it up with him for a little bit. I know you guys have probably seen the pictures out there if you have us on socials at all but you know it's just another eye-opening experience it was just something i know personally i know the same thing probably for bryce but just in retrospect looking back at it, it's just an opportunity to to kind of ground yourself but then it's also a new like restart i think to go and just go harder and motivate yourself for even more because it's some more materialistic thing that we have both had and had in our hands and we understand that feeling and how cool it feels and it we want to keep experiencing that and whatever we keep doing in our life and i just think it's a good not reality check because it's the opposite because it's not our reality, but it's like a flip from reality check. And it's like, wow, this, this is something that we're going to be doing for the rest of our lives. Not to specifically whatever it is, but just that type of lifestyle and stuff. And it was cool because a lot of 22 year olds are not being able to do this with the podcast school, juggling everything we're doing. And it just, I don't, I'm, pr I'm damn proud of me and you and just what we're doing with all this. And I know I kind of ran down a little side avenue with that, but it, it's something that we need to pot ourselves on the back that we don't always do. And I think it's something that we really need to talk about, not, not to, you know, bolster heads and make us more confident in ourselves. Cause we already are confident in what we do. We understand that, but it, it was just another humbling experience. And it, I'm just thankful to be in this with you. Facts, facts, facts. I agree with all, all what he said. I mean, I think you summed it up pretty, pretty well. I think at the end of the day, one of the things you said was like, it is a different reality when we take those trips and we, uh, we, we step into that world. Uh, obviously, it's <clears throat> it's people that we don't get to meet back home. Um, and that's not a shot at anyone back home. It's just uh, there's not as many opportunities that you can create back in Freeport, Illinois. And uh, that's something, again, and I, that's what we're pushing for is to be able to allow more opportunities to be created back in our hometown, our community, um, because of the stuff that we're doing, uh, because of the stuff that other successful athletes and successful people in general are yeah. doing back home. Um, so to be able to take that trip out to Texas, uh, celebrate Dez's birthday with him at a private event, a great venue, like Gannon mentioned, Nick and Sam's, <clears throat> it was fantastic. Uh, it was uh, stepping out of our element, being uncomfortable. Uh, and I think that's one of the largest things that Gannon and I have been able to accomplish lately is we've been damn uncomfortable with the stuff that we've been doing. Uh, the environment. All, all new. All yeah, new. It's, it's all new. It's all fresh to us. And I think that's why we've continued to grow and learn immensely regardless of the content we've been pushing out because i know it's it's not been a lot of content lately but uh, we've been stepping out of our comfort zone doing these new things 
um, expressing ourselves in new ways, meeting new people. And it's, it's brought a lot of knowledge to us the last couple of weeks and months. Um, but I know Gannon and I are both very excited uh, next week to be able to be home and we'll maybe even have some time to record a podcast together in yeah. person uh, this coming week for Thanksgiving, being home and enjoying some family, friends and football together. Uh, but yeah. speaking of football, let's 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 dive right into this NFL. Story. Well, well, one more, just one more side note off of that. I was gonna say it, but I just got talking and fired up about it. Just like you said, the note about it, it's not an knock to Freeport people or the A one five area. I think it's a very good thing to mention. I think out of this trip and this second time, it's been more uh, people reaching out like of an inspiration type thing, and I think that's mm-hmm. the coolest part. Which I know, speaking for myself, that means the most out of anything else that we do in all this is showing, hey, look what we've done and what you can do going, going off of what we've done. And that's the thing. We yeah. want somebody to show up and beat us to do even more to keep excelling. And I think that's the biggest thing that people are starting to recognize and see. You know, there's been a couple people here that have reached out, teammates, old teammates of mine. They're all, hey, I want to get this podcast going. I kind of think about doing this with some stuff. What's your idea on some equipment? How would you go about posting? And again, I tell them it, it's whatever you want to do. That's the cool thing about this podcast. As you know, we're going to keep rambling. We're going to get into this NFL stuff. But just having those talks and people reaching out and trusting your your opinion because they've seen you do it and done it, that's the coolest thing in my in my eyes and my validation to know that I can influence and help other people. <laughs> that you don't always think you are in the moment. I think it's a good, wow, that, that happened, or I'm doing that to somebody. And I think yeah. that's the coolest part. No, I agree. And I think the one sidebar thing I can throw in quick is just saying – like at the end of the day, your only competition is yourself. So if you're if you're sitting there thinking about I want to do this, I want to go do that, I want to meet this person. I mean, it's up to you. Nobody else is going to tell you that you can do it by yourself. Uh, and I think if you have the motivation and inspiration behind other people's work and and you can grasp that, you want to be like that, then then fight with yourself, battle for it. Um, I think any, anything's possible if you you continue to work for it uh, through yourself. Uh, don't take um negative comments into consideration just continue to battle day by day uh work for yourself uh but let's let's dive into that nfl storylines now let's just let's just uh address the elephant in the room straight up right away you know let's get in obviously packers fan me cowboys fan as you can tell i'm uh not necessarily too happy today obviously you can with my voice i'm a little sick as well so my voice is a little a little drainy today but Cowboys Packers last uh this past week weekend <clears throat> Sunday at 325 we watched our two favorite teams go at it um I think heading into the game I think Gann and I both had similar views on how this game would go uh like I told him before we recorded this I said I thought the Packers would win uh I think he had I mean more- I, I didn't think we were good yeah I didn't think I, I'd say they're complete different expectations I mean, yeah, okay, so you I, – I didn't have any going in. I had, We were on a five-year losing streak, bro. We lost to the Giants, to the Jets. I mean, we lost to half the damn NFL in the last yeah. month. So, like – I mean, yeah, to be fair, <laughs> I mean, Giants and Jets are both successful teams right now record-wise. So, I mean, those aren't incredibly bad I mean, bad we lost to the Lions and Redskins, too. So, if you really want to go – Commanders, on. correct yourself, commanders. Yeah, uh, sorry, commanders. <laughs> but but anyway, I, I think with this game uh, heading into Sunday night – uh, I just, to me, I just got the sense that it was one of those Dallas Cowboys midseason trap games. Uh, and it wasn't even necessarily um, viewed as like a trap trap game with like a, a, a lesser team. So I think when you think of trap game, you think of a team that is not necessarily that successful, a team that doesn't necessarily have that all, all that much talent. I think Green Bay has some talent and obviously their quarterback is Aaron Rodgers. Uh, but for me, I think it was just one of those things where Dallas has lost to Green Bay the last eight out of 10 times, nine out of 11 now. Uh, McCarthy coming back, uh, and I think all the Odell Beckham talk this past week with Dallas, uh, players were getting interviewed nonstop about it. Coming off the bye week, there's like three, four factors right there where I think it's just, it just felt like one of those weeks. It felt like one of those weeks you're going to go into the game, you're going to think you're going to beat the team. Uh, It's going to be a great reunion for McCarthy to come home, get a W at Lambeau. Um, and things go they, – they go solid. I wouldn't say they, they went terrible. I mean, you, you played a – it was a fun game to watch. It, it really was a fun game to watch. Uh, being up 14 points, though, and, and having Green Bay score 17 unanswered is completely uncalled for. Uh, and I'll tell Gannon – before Gannon gets into anything, I just want to say I'm straight up pissed off 
uh, not necessarily with just this game, but it just happens every year with Dallas. You start off the year, you got one, two, three losses, and you, you look like you're going to ride into the playoffs, and and then you never know what's going to happen in the playoffs. But this midseason BS happens with Dallas every year, uh, and we're hitting that point where, where we're going to hit a stretch of some tougher games. Uh, Green Bay was not a joke. It wasn't a joke of a game to go into. Uh, and then you got Minnesota this upcoming week. And then you got New York Giants, who have been playing well and are in second in your division now. These these this three game stretch is not is not a joke. Uh, and if you lose these three games, or if you lose two out of three, you don't know what's gonna hang in the balance the next the next couple weeks and where your season could go, especially with Philly being undefeated and the Giants only having two losses and us having three. So that was what was interesting to me. I think when you get into some minor details of the game itself, I think uh, there were some questionable decisions, um, not necessarily coaching, but I would say near the, the end of the game, um, the field goal, it being too cold, not taking the field goal. I personally still would have went for it on that fourth and four. I just don't think they drew up a correct play call. I just think the play call was mm-hmm. iffy and, and uh, very awful. Yeah. So, I mean, I would have went for it. Fourth and four, you're being aggressive. You got Aaron Rodgers. I would have ran the ball with Pollard. I would have ran. Oh, and, and I mean, them, the draws were working with Pollard. The, the delay handoffs were working. They were working. And they were even working with Malik Davis as well. Uh, so I, yeah. I was very confused with the play call. Uh, I, th- I think the offsides penalty with our receiver, that was just having a rookie in there, a bonehead mistake. Because, uh, I mean, realistically, I don't know what you think about this game, but we were driving. Like we look good on the overtime oh, possession. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. That that and the holding call was the holding call was massive. Massive. That holding call was changed the whole overtime. I was sitting on the couch like, man, I don't know about this. As soon as I I knew we had to get the ball, in my opinion, for us to win. In my oh. head, that that's just because that's our offense and that's how our team kind of is right now. Well, that's just annoying. I mean, in the in the fact that like. I know they, they made a minor change and it goes into effect with playoffs and the NFL overtime rules. I hate it. It's so it's so BS because whoever wins the coin toss is is, is automatically instead of a 50-50 chance, which it starts at 50-50 before the coin toss, right? 50-50. Whoever whoever's going to get the ball, heads tails, then you get the ball and I would argue that if you get the ball, your chances of winning go up to anywhere from 75 to 85. Like you have that. Yeah, I, mean, and, and I, I just, just don't I just understand don't like how you it. can't give the team how you can't just. I'm fine with the only the ten minutes. If that shit or that crap, excuse me, ends in a tie, it, it's a tie. Like I, that's fine, but at least give the teams both chances to possess the ball. Like that. Oh just, yeah. It's does not make any because then after that, both teams have the ball. Next score wins. Then you can eliminate that ten minute overtime tie because then the people are just kicking a field goal. Because, yeah, then it flips when you get in the playoffs. So, like, why are you doing this for 17 weeks of the season? And then all mm-hmm. of a sudden, oh, now the game's being more. But those games, I, no, it those did. things that I don't. <clears throat> yeah, it, do, it doesn't make much sense to me. But Green Bay scored 17 unanswered, and they won the football game. And I think it's it's me recording this now and talking about it. It's time to move on from it. It is what it is. We We took the L. Green Bay got the W. Uh, but let, let's like we've we've pondered on some other stuff the last couple of minutes. Let's dive into some other teams. Bro, whoa, whoa, you ain't gonna even let me get a rundown. If you, on the you, you, game. if if you want to get the heck is going. Whoa, 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 whoa! I'm getting loud on this mic for probably the first time ever. I heard you starting to skate right through that. I'm like, is he really gonna try and go to the next game? I don't want to hear it. Yo, I don't want to hear it. And see, like this. This is the exact talk that I'm gonna make my point before I even jump into the Packers thing. I told Bryce earlier. We we're on the phone. This is a sad reality of sports fans. Yeah, people lose. Packers just came off of a five-game losing streak. But you get up and you keep doing your stuff because it's a sports game. You can't let it ruin your whole damn day. Look at this mm. man. He's over here. Oh, I'm pissed. I hate the Cowboys. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's sports, man. I mean, we did win. so it's But yeah, it's also yeah. coming off of a five-game losing streak. So I got an argument there. But no. See, so you just got low expectations. Aaron Rodgers you taking L's game. don't matter. You don't got anything to – um, Aaron Rodgers, right now. you guys never have had anything to matter. Dak can't win a game against the Packers or a postseason game. But let's start talking about the game before I really get you fired up here. Because Aaron Rodgers played his best game of the year. Not stat-wise, not I, whatever you want to call it. 
he managed that offense, and I said that before the season, that they're going to have to be almost 50-50 run pass for them to be an effective team this year. And you mm-hmm. saw that was on full display. They ran the ball more than they threw the ball the entire I think Rodgers had 10 completions in the third quarter or whatever. Some crazy number. It's not Aaron Rodgers' game. Everybody was like, well, Rodgers didn't play well. I thoroughly enjoyed watching that offense methodically go down the field, running the ball. They, they made a consistent effort running ball. Obviously, Dallas cannot contain and cannot contain somebody in the run game on the defensive side of the ball. But you still got to go out and do it the entire game because they have shown it in quarters throughout this year, but they haven't made it consistent. Even in the fourth quarter when they were down 14 points, they came out on those drives and were running the ball. They kept – that yeah. has not happened, I don't think, ever with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. No, so they that definitely was stuck to a game plan. To they stuck to and, a game And plan. I hope that they keep doing this win or lose for the rest of the year because they give him the best chance to win games. But I just got to say, a round of applause for Christian Watson. He has gotten a lot of flack. I mean, the dude's had so many injuries this year for the Packers. Mm. It's just really tough when you talk down on a young kid that hasn't been able to be on the field and show what he's completely worked to a team. And he did that. I mean, he had three catches or four catches for over 100 yards and three touchdowns. And it was awesome to see his family kind of chirping back on people on Twitter, his older brother. And, you know, they were arguing with Shannon Sharp and all that. It was just really cool to see because it's like it's a little bit of a payback. It's due respect. Like he was kind of meant for this at some point. It was his breakout game. And it just felt good as a sports fan and a Packers fan to see somebody, you know, that has gone through injuries myself I understand what that feeling you're on the sidelines you're not able to contribute when you're supposed to be this top high-end pick to be Rodgers weapon right away day one he's had a hammy injury for three-fourths of the season so that was a side note that I just thought was a really cool story after he had some drops really in that game Rodgers kept going to him because there's nobody else on the field and it he flat out can fly and is a game changer if he can learn some more on the route running in his hands because holy crap he can change the game with his legs and just being able to get open on a couple of those end zone touches at the end, he just outran everybody on his routes. Like, it was mm-hmm. just a simple fact. But we maximized everything we did that game to win. And it, we had to do that. We had to go to overtime. The pot to Mari Rogers that he fumbled almost costed us that in regulation. Why, with four fumbles now in 10 games, is he still even being considered for the return thing? It's nothing against Amari Rogers, but you just can't be fumbling once every other game. Yeah. on special teams and still expect to have a job. <laughs> that just that just can't happen those are little things that they're gonna have to clean up if green bay wants to flip the script for the rest of the season which is a win kind of allowed them to do there's a few side notes on the cowboys that i'm talking about this isn't i kind of just want to hear your opinions on some of them because they're just actual football questions that i have and stuff that we get a lot of the same people on social media we see a lot of the same stuff and this isn't because it it comes down to this. The first thing is Dak. And there's been a lot of talk about it. There just always seems to be somewhat of an excuse, I think is how I want to put it. Not an excuse, just a different reason to why Dak couldn't have done much or why it wasn't Dak's fault. I don't want to even say Dak's fault, but why Dak couldn't. You know, it's the defense, special teams, rookies, coaching decisions, GMs. At some point, some of that has to come down to your 40 mil a year quarterback because other teams do that there's a lot more pressure i'm talking on actual sports people talking not people on social media that just complain about dak every single week and say cooper rush is better because those people don't obviously don't know football there has to be some accountability i think that's kind of what it is and i know dak takes that upon himself and all that but out of some of the cowboys fans there has to be something for not being able to beat the packers to not be able to win postseason games when you're seeing these other quarterbacks that are not as good and talented as Dak is, get it done. And there's a lot of other factors, but there still has to be something that comes on your leader of that um, offense and of your team. The other thing, the defense for you guys, it, it, it's interesting because Trayvon Diggs, is, it, one side of that field is cut off. You're not throwing to that side of the field. That, that's kind of how it's now it's looking, especially with the other targets that you can throw to on the other side of the field for the Cowboys. And I think – that is the liability, but they have to sure up the run D more importantly mm-hmm. than they do their secondary. They, 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 they have mm-hmm. to stop the run because that the time of management, that's how you let teams like Green Bay stay in the game and beat you, completely not being able to run or not be able to rush. <clears throat> they did get pressure on him. D-Law is a dog. I mean, he was in Rodgers' face that first half, second half, all day. I know Micah Parsons is banged up also, but if he's a first-team All-Pro, he – I'll touch on that. give you in run defense at I'll times? touch on no, that. No, I, and I – no, and I get that because I've already heard a lot about it. Right? That was more of a thing that I think that I've seen enough of that it's hard for me 
and it's not taken away from him because he's an elite pass rusher, elite pass rusher, 100%. But you got to be able to do more on the field. Obviously, they've watched some of his snaps because he got hurt early on and some load management. But it's also him being subbed out because they're scared of him being in there for the run, I think. And then call me crazy what you want. I just think that there is a little bit of a vulnerability with him out there over rushing and over trying to get to the quarterback sometimes. And I think you saw that in a couple of the replays yesterday. Well, I think – Just an observation, and I think that can only help the defense if there's a certain type of – I don't know how to say it. You know, there's a little alternate or shift or whatever with Parsons and how that defense evolves because they get pressure on the quarterback, but that D-line is also awful against the run. So there's got to be some take and give there. You know what I'm saying? There, there's got to be something – you can get a little bit more QB hits. I, I don't know specifically, but he's just one. He's not in position to help with the run. He's usually trailing on the backside of the play, trying to be a pass rusher. I just think it's either they don't like him out there or they just want him solely as a pass rusher, and I think that's the biggest thing. Do they not trust him to go out and do that, and they only want him to pass rush? But with his athleticism and speed, why not? It, it, you know what I mean? Well, so, I mean, I'll start with the Parsons thing. And at first off, I want to say, well, his position is off off the ball linebacker, so he's not going to be in on those run plays all the time. Uh, but 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 why, why why aren't you not playing him in other positions, bro? He's your best defensive athlete. I mean, I think at the end of the day, it also comes down to experience and where he's played in college, where he's played in the pros. And I do personally think right now, yes, I, I see, I I no, see, in, well, I see and view Parsons now as a edge rusher, and I think everyone across the NFL is what is that's what he's viewed as now, because I think, I think even watching him set up, like I get confused sometimes when I see him as a linebacker, like I'm like, okay, why are we not bringing him off the edge? I, I do think that there is an issue there. And I, and I think it also comes down to the fact that he's been jumbled around so much and that he's such a moving piece on, on the defensive side of the ball that I, I think if you're not playing the same position all the time, you're going to have some screw ups. You're going to be a bit of a liability in certain spurts. Yeah, certain the, the experience, hundred percent. Yeah, and and I'm not saying that Parsons can't be an incredible linebacker too, because we've seen glimpses of it. You've you've seen him be a. Great I just want to see him. I just want to see him do it because his athleticism and speed. And I don't know if they put him in the right position. That's kind of what some of my points. Well, I, are. I do think that there is an iffy spot when it comes down to that. But me personally, I'm rather going to I'm rather going to want to see Parsons rush off the edge. I think it's what he's good at. Oh, I'm not saying that, but it, I think it's the overall helping of your run defense oh, in that front seven. It is. It's it going to help solidify that, plus him rushing the quarterback, because if he's doing some more with the run, then he's going to get some more opportunities to rush the guy, because he's not doing it 80 to 90% of the time. Well, I think another part of the issue is that Dallas is linebacking core outside of Parsons. I mean, Anthony Barr has been a solid addition for us this year. I'll give him that credit, but he's hurt right now. Yeah. Um, and then you've got a rookie in there now, Damone Clark who's got speed. He's faster than Micah Parsons. He, he's got speed. He tested faster than Parsons. He's got running back speed. He's got almost damn near receiver speed. The dude's lightning quick out of LSU. Great linebacker, I think, can groom into a great role there. Obviously, rookie, though. It's new. Lane Van Der Esch has been the same player the last three-plus years. You don't know what you're going to get. Tackling's iffy. Pursuits, yeah. pursuits iffy. I mean, I'm not going to say he's been bad this year because he's been on the field. Past couple of years, he's been hurt. Uh, it's It's been iffy for him but I think this season so far Vander Esch hasn't been terrible but I do want to go back to that Dak the the Dak statement yeah let's talk about that <clears throat> so I I mean I'm not going to tell you that he he couldn't have helped us win this game because yes Dak Dak did come out flat um and I think it, it's what allowed the offense to come out flat now we talked about this a little before our episode with the receiving core uh and I mentioned to you Michael Gallup is not 100 percent trustworthy right now because he doesn't trust himself he, he's still Still got that mental fuck funk going on where he's a little bit concerned about whether he's hurt, and I think you saw that uh, when he was running the route near the when end, he, yeah. And he pulled up, and everyone was like, "Oh crap, non-contact! This dude could be—he could be hurt." Uh, and I know that crossed my mind right away. So me, as a fan sitting there watching him, and I see that yeah. happen, like if that's my first thought, that oh crap, non-contact, he's hurt. Like imagine what his thought is in that position, which I think is what it was. He pulled up felt something and he's like oh crap and so I think that's still in the back of his head and not having a 100% gallop right now is hurting that team because you need to take the pressure off CD if you want to see him as a one uh and CD had his best game of the best game of the year at over 130 yards yeah C C CD's a one he he's proved it for me this year I, I mean even with Dak out and all that, that yeah. that's why I think 
Go back. Keep going. Keep talking. But with the CD thing, so Dak's two interceptions, right? I'm not going to put the blame on him for the interceptions, and I'll tell you why. The, uh, but I am gonna before I get into the why I do decision put, making the decision making to throw some of those balls though could be on Dak. I don't think so. In in those two plays, that the first the end zone one the end zone one could be argued. The one across the middle, yeah, okay. I'll I think that. I think the end zone one's even more clear. I think the one where CD ran the wrong route is less clear because you obviously you don't know what the route is, but. The one where, where they depicted it and broke it down in the situation where the end zone one, that, the one that he threw, the dude was clearly looking for Dalton Schultz in the back of the end zone. And it was going to float over top of CD. The problem was, obviously, which they mentioned on the broadcast, was the spacing and the routes. And if you look at that, any person who's played football understands you can't have two receivers running a route that where they're two yards apart from each other. Schultz was clearly in the wrong on that route. He cut it off early. Him and CD are two yards apart. Dak throws it flat, it gets picked off. If if Schultz is running the correct route, he's in the back of the end zone. CD's five yards in front of him running a shallow cross across the middle, and that ball is going to float over top of CD, and it's going to hit Schultz. But I will agree with you in the sense that throwing that ball there, is, it's still a tight window, and there's still an opportunity for that ball to get picked off. So I, there is a little bit of, of accountability <clears throat> that needs to be held on Dak's end with that throw, yes. 100% agree with you there. But I'm do, just talking the grand scheme of things, the whole Cowboys look. And, I, and I've and i agreed with you. I, I do think yeah. that, that Dak needs to be held accountable in certain situations. But I'm not going to put the loss on him in this situation by any means because you've mentioned it. Run D was horrendous. Run D was horrendous. Oh, yeah. No, no. I'm not talking even this game. It's just like a common trend that I see. Not even Cowboys fans. There's a lot of people with football. There's a lot of other ways. And you can only get around it so many times. And that's kind of what I'm coming back because I've never been a – Big Dak hater, you know. I've def- I wouldn't say defend him, but I'm I'm neutral with him. You know, I, I respect him, but it was also a fine line when you see other guys putting production out there with less on the field and less time yeah. in the playoffs and other circumstances. And like you said, coming out flat. How the hell do you come out flat in that game? Well, well like, like I said, I, I, how? Like I said, bro. That's that's it's what happens with this Dallas team. They they come out flat mid season. And that's his team. So who's to blame? It's his team. He's the leader. That that's what my point is. That's the only reason why I'm not even talking on the field actual stuff. How you see how he carries himself and all that. That's not what I would expect out of Dak Prescott's team. Is kind of what I'm getting at. And it's has shown over and over last year. San Fran. He's a completely different guy than Rodgers. I don't expect that crap out of Rodgers because he's not that vocal, you know, big imposing guy that's talking. He's running, picking up first downs. Like I, I and I'm not saying I'm not questioning Dak at all, but it's just like. What more can he do to step that up? Because they have mm-hmm. to have that if the Cowboys ever want to have any playoff success. Like, they have to. No, I agree. It, it, but... you just, it, and I just – what else can he do? Because he can do more, in my opinion, Well, I in think... certain different ways. It's not even throwing the football. It, 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 it's just – but, like, that, the game was – I was like, I came out and that's how the Packers have looked for the last month straight, how the mm-hmm. Cowboys came out. Like, it was like – Wow, and you got your old, your former coach back here. Like it's one of the best places to play in football against Aaron Rodgers. I, I don't know. It just was. It was a weird vibe from the Cowboys in that first quarter. I do think. I mean, you're going to get a dose of dosage of what's going to come with the Dallas Cowboys season over the next two games, playing the Vikings, playing the Giants, and we're going to go from there. But it looks like, I mean, based on our meeting time that we've been talking, we got about eight minutes left, and before our Zoom call cuts us off, so let's. Let's do this, Gannon. Uh, talking about NFL storylines, let's kind of limit this to I'll ask you and then we can rock with my opinion here. But what are some teams that have impressed you and what are some teams that have not impressed you? I'm going to talk about again. We talked about it on the other episode. I think it's two teams. It's the same way. It's the Seahawks and Broncos linked with the Russell Wilson trade. Yes, Seattle just dropped his game in Munich to the Bucks, but – Holy crap, what is going on there with that energy and Pete Carroll and them boys, Geno Smith, yeah. with the picks coming back on the flip side of that trade and how bad the Broncos are and how bad they looked again yesterday. I mean, it's just like this. It's completely opposite directions, and it's crazy because nobody would have guessed that coming into the season. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't even say they would have guessed how bad Russell is. They would not have guessed what the Seattle's doing. It's cool to see Lockett and no, DK and those boys get behind Geno. And they look like they're enjoying football again. And it's, again, another interesting thing with how Russell controls some of that because there's been a little shots taken from some of those Seattle guys. But one more staff, before I ask you a question. 
18 points a game is what the Broncos would have to score this year in every single game I for saw them to that. be. I saw that. I, 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 They'd be for eight, them to one, have one, undefeated eight, one. or like one. Yeah, one loss. That's one eight, loss. One, nine, that's how one, good yeah. that defense is, dude. And oh. that's the crazy part to me because on paper that move looked tremendous for the Broncos. They had that all pro defense. Even after trading Bradley Chubb away, they still have all that. That that blows my mind looking at that and the front office deal that the Seattle got from the Brown or from the Broncos. It, yeah. it, it's insane to me. But let's talk about um well, you want to talk about the NFC East or you, you don't want me to hop on that no more? Oh, we can I mean the NFC East, I think when you look at it, it's it's weird. I, I think that's all. Let's I can go. Say. You want to go your picks? Well, who who do you think's the best team in the AFC and NFC right now? Let's do that. I think the best team in the AFC is the Buffalo Bills. Um, I think the best team in the NFC. I think it's it's such a jumbled mess on the NFC side. Uh, I'll I will say though. I don't. I mean, this is an opinion that's kind of going across the league right now. Um, it's not a team that has performed incredibly well. But the Bucks scare me come playoff time, and they're, and they're starting to figure some things well, out. Well, they're going to win their division. That's the other thing. They're going to have a home game because of how bad the NFC South is. And I've only looked into this just because, as of right now, if it looks like if Dallas finishes second in their division, that they'll probably play Tampa in the playoffs, and I'm terrified to see Tampa. That 4-5 or five game, baby. Yeah, I'm, I'm terrified to see Tampa. Um, I think a team like the 49ers I think is another team you look, at, you look at. and. And here's the thing. I was actually listening to radio Jeff Cavanaugh before we hopped on this podcast. He was talking about talking about some playoff stuff, and obviously the Cowboys struggle with the 49ers. But I think just looking at the 49ers team, people look at Jimmy Garoppolo and it's just like he does enough. And I don't think that Jimmy Garoppolo is by any means a bad quarterback. I, I really don't. I don't think he's a bad quarterback. He's obviously. I think the people that complain about him the most are the people that just know that you could do better. And I, and that's what Jeff and and the the radio broadcast yeah. I was listening to they said and and it made me see that more clear understanding that yes Jimmy G is an average to good quarterback and 49ers fans think he's bad or people across the league think he's bad because they know the 49ers could do more uh, and I'm they they also mentioned like what could we be seeing right now with Trey Lance I mean nine weeks ten weeks into the season now heading into week eleven. Mm-hmm you're getting a full season evaluation out of Trey Lance, like that quarterback, he could be bad. He could be bad. We don't know. The, 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 the Sorry, I got my words mixed up. The evaluation of Trey Lance right now, there is none. We haven't been able to see it. So a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo, I'm still going to put the 49ers in the playoff race for the NFC. They could end up in the Super Bowl. They could. You got Christian McCaffrey now. Oh, yeah. You got a tough team. Uh, so I think when you look at the NFC, though, I'm still going to – Still going to put Dallas up in there, 49ers, Bucks, uh, but obviously the way Philly's playing. Philly, they're undefeated. But I will say, I mean, I like what they got there. I do. I do. And it pains me to say it. Hurts has been playing well. And he's and him and A.J. Brown got that connection. But I don't think Philly's really played anybody. I don't think You're missing really the best tested. part of their team. You're missing the best part of their team, their the, defense. The defense is very tough, yes. But I will, I will tell you right now, regardless of the Dallas Green Bay game, Dallas with Cooper Rush played that Philly game and it was a winnable game. It was a winnable game. And I think with Dak, we can beat him. I think we will beat him. But again, it's the same. It's the same controversy you're saying with Jimmy G. You know what you had in Cooper Rush. No. And you and he ran that same offense and it's like how the Rodgers beat you guys yesterday. But then it's like, what? And that's why some people are like, well, we're winning more with Cooper than we were with Dak. And it's a fine line because, yeah, I'm taking Dak every single day, but there, I can also see the argument for those guys that are just being a distributor in the quarterback position yeah. because at times it works and yeah. it makes people hold the ball and it creates the time of possession. But I agree with you with the Bills. The Bills are their worst enemy. If Josh Allen holds on to that ball a couple of times yesterday, it, Again, Vikings, darn good team. I was going to mention Kirk that Cousins, we can't forget not the Vikings, a good quarterback. Yeah. yeah, I just can't. He was still throwing the ball over the place yesterday. Well, I was shocked they even won that game, to be honest. I mean, it was probably the no. game of the year so far, but I was shocked they won it. Uh, but that, out of all that happened, the Bills were still 20 yards away from winning that game in overtime. Like, yeah. that's the crazy part to me. Well, and Justin, <laughs> Justin Jefferson is just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, and, and, and if he's taken out, or is minimizing certain games, that Vikings team is a lot different. And I think that's why the Bills 
And, like, you got to go with the Eagles right now. You just have to yeah. be in the undefeated team in the NFC. And it makes that Vikings win because some people are like, where's their big win on the schedule? I think that was now it turns them more into a statement when beating the Vikings earlier this year. All right. Well, no, there's looks... going to be a lot to play out. A lot to play out. <clears throat> I don't mean to cut you off, but it looks like yeah. we got about – exactly two minutes on the dot before our meeting time gets cut off so let's do this Gannon with two minutes to go before the buzzer hits right now let's make let's make a way too early I wouldn't say way too early let's make a too early prediction what's your NFC championship game just give me the two teams and AFC championship give me the two teams I mean I, I, think I don't know if, <laughs> AFC I have to think about this NFC one for a second but yeah the AFC I think it's gonna be Chiefs Bills yeah, that's what <laughs> I'm saying that's you what can't I'm saying. argue now, now I will say, if somehow the Ravens can start to get somewhat healthy, Lamar in that ground game can make some noise in the AFC. A hundred percent, in my opinion. But the, that, yeah. mm -hmm. that's it. A hundred percent. But the, they can do that with Lamar's putting together. They can get Mark Andrews healthy. Yeah, they're still low on the offensive side, but it's Lamar controlling the game with his legs. It's the game changer, no matter when. Like as you can see with Justin Fields. But the NFC, it's sneaky. Now, I've talked a lot about him. Not too much good. I think it's going to be the 49ers coming out for one of those games. I, I really I do. do. And I just I think it's too. Shanahan, how he did that yesterday. He split the carries with Mostert and um, CMC. Oh, it, Mostert's not there no more. Not, what's his name? Uh, not Wilson. It? They trade a Wilson. That's the other. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know. I just saw it. Or whatever. We've been talking for too long. But, yeah, that, that and then – um. Packers, why not? We're going to make a run and go to the playoffs. All right. Well, that's, that, that's a hot take. That's not what's going to happen. All right. That's my well, hot take. I'll end it here because we're about to run out of time. But I think I yeah. think you'll I, – I agree with the 49ers as well. Uh, I think you can maybe see Philly, maybe see Dallas. I wouldn't be shocked. I'm hoping for Dallas, but we'll see. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, sorry about getting cut off, but – got to do what you got to do and it kind of gave us a little time crunch to get rolling so uh we'll catch you guys soon we'll probably be doing another one of these episodes until then subscribe like and share for us thank you